So this is my second live. And um, for this, I'm going to be making chocolate chip cookies today. It's actually a recipe by Claire Saffitz. She's also known as the dessert person. She has a recipe cook cookbook. And each week she makes these amazing cookies. And last Thursday, she posted this and my partner said he had to have this cookie. He was really craving a chocolate chip cookie. And I thought, why not? This looks like just the perfect recipe. So is everyone, hi, I'm hearing it okay. So I'm Roxy and welcome to my kitchen. Let's get started. Last week we talked about having a no mixer recipe and this is a one bowl recipe. It starts with brown butter. So that's two sticks of unsalted butter that is cooked from yellow stage to tan stage to golden stage and if you hear some sizzling in the meantime don't worry that's that's totally fine um, just keep cooking it until you get to that phase pour it into a metal bowl and then whisk in some two tablespoons of cream and then you're gonna get this just a nice and creamy butter I'm gonna just add that in here now it smells really good Thank you so much for joining. So this is, this is what gives it that butterscotchy caramelized flavor. What gives it a, at least this cookie, a nice chewy center and a crispy edge are the brown sugar and granulated sugar. So we have three quarters a cup of brown sugar. I'm gonna add that in now. And by the way, I wanted to mention that I will be, I, I actually have a chocolate chip cookie cake coming up. So I'm really excited to share that with you. Um, here's the white sugar, again, three quarter cup of granulated sugar, and that's 150 grams per each. Then I'm just gonna whisk this a little bit. Hi, Terry. I had some technical difficulties. Thank you for joining. So a lot of stuff stuck in here. That's totally okay. We're about to get in eggs. So for this recipe, it prescribes two cold eggs. I've never seen that in a recipe before, <laughs> but I'm doing this according, mostly according to the recipe. So we're going to get this in. Again, I'm using a whisk. Looks really nice and smells really good. You know what I was re researching? I didn't know that um, that, um, that butterscotchiness was really due to brown, the brown sugar. <laughs> But that's really nice to know. So second egg, cold again. And with this egg, I'm going to add a high quality vanilla. I really like this brand. Uh, it's Madagascar and Mexican. But they have a lot of different types of, um, of vanillas. So get that mixed in. The goal is just to get all of the eggs, all of those runny pieces, we just want to make sure they're incorporated. I'm not trying to get an air here. It's not a cake. <laughs> and I think I mentioned that the it was just a tablespoon of the vanilla. So moving on from there, I'm actually going to switch over, let me get those big chunks out, to a spatula. And we're, I mean, this is full on batter time. We're adding the all purpose flour. This is sifted with a whisk. So I'm gonna get that in. Baking soda. Oh, two cups of all purpose flour, two teaspoons of baking soda. That's also whisked. Then Claire uses a diamond crystal salt. It's a more chunky salt, two teaspoons. I use pink Himalayan salt, it's pretty. My mom uses that, so I like to use it too. Oh, let's make sure it's all in there. Now 
and we're going to fold everything in. How's everyone doing? Hey Filmmakers Formula! Thank you for joining, hey Kev! We're not going to have soup cookies this week. <laughs> I'm really excited to share a one bowl recipe with you, especially since we talked about it just last week. So before I get the chocolate in and show you what all the chocolate is about, I'm going to just make sure everything is incorporated. I just want to make sure most of the dry is gone. This is also, I'm going to do some movie magic. I learned that from Filmmaker's Formula. Um, and I'm not, right now is when I would turn on the, this is when I would turn on the oven to 375 degrees. I'm going to give you a couple of tips on that coming up here, but this looks really good so far. Here's where I'm at. There's just a little bit of dry pieces, but we're good now. Let me just get all of that. How's everyone doing? Matt, Farah, Kathy, Gwen. Okay, so there we go. I have a lot of chocolate. I'm kidding. It's, it looks like a lot of chocolate, but it's not. We have about 10 ounces of chocolate. Claire Safi, it's the dessert lady, the dessert person, I'm sorry. She uses 10 ounces of chocolate. So I'm doing exactly the same thing. So here we have a nice German chocolate. It's more similar to a semi-sweet chocolate. Then I got these really nice, high-quality dark chocolate chips from Whole Foods. And then I wanted to throw in chocolate chips. She doesn't do that, but I promise it's high quality, so it'll taste really good. Nice. These are all nice and chopped up. There's a little bit of variety. And I have these to put on top because I want a cookie that's going to look like this. Every bite is going to have some flavor, a little bit of chew, a little bit of chocolate. So that's why I have a lot of chocolate here, but we can add this in now. Another thing too that she does is she says it's okay to add all of these little flakes in there. Usually I wouldn't because I want a pretty cookie, <laughs> one that's differentiated, but it's going to add a nice chocolate flavor to the dough. So look at that. I know it looks like a lot right now, but we just keep mixing it and it's going to be a really handsome cookie. How's everyone's day going? Okay. I think this is looking really good. So here we are. My dough. And I have a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. And actually, I'll do it like this so it's easier to see, right? And what Claire does is takes a one quarter cup scoop and fills it and then uses a spoon to scoop it out. For me, I, I have the scooper, I use it all the time for cake decorating and figured it is one quarter cup. So I'm just going to scoop it like this. Not a generous amount, just exactly the amount. And because these are gonna go into the fridge for flavor development for 24 to 48 hours, I promise I'm not gonna make you wait that long to see the cookie this time. They can actually go really close together. So. Here's one scoop. Look at that, it's so good. <laughs> when you're baking, you wanna make sure there's at least three inches between them because they, they spread a lot. I mean, they go from this to this. I mean, that's some good spread right there.
And when I did this the <laughs> few times to get ready for this, I, I got between uh, 12 to 16 cookies. Oh, I better make space for this tray. But what's really nice about this cookie is that you can make them and then uh, you refrigerate them to let them flavor develop, but then once you've reached that 24 to 48 hours, you can pop these in a Ziploc bag and ha basically have fresh cookies on demand. When I'm baking these, I Claire goes for a 350 degree oven, rotates them at 12 minutes, and cooks for 18 to 22 minutes. I found that that gets a really, really spready cookie that's kind of just dark all the way through. So for me, what I'm recommending, 375 degrees at 12 minutes. And that was, that's perfect for me. I'll show you the cookies that I just baked up here. These ones are from yesterday. Let me make sure covering everything. But instead of just continuing, let me just show you what I mean by getting these in a Ziploc bag. Here we go, these have been frozen and I took these and put them directly in the oven frozen. No wait time, don't get it to room temperature and it comes out perfect. So these ones are the ones with chocolate uh, crumbs cut up into it all the entire uh, way through. You know, the little choppy pieces that are left over. This one is without. It just bakes darker versus lighter. I think it's just really a preference. But let's just finish this up. And then I'll just show you, instead of going all the way through it, I'm going to just show you how I add um, these chocolate chips. So I just like to have a lot of them. Oh, by the way, I wanted to mention if you like coffee flavor and you have instant coffee in your house, use about two of these in the cookie and you have a nice espresso flavor. Don't use espresso powder because it's going to be a little too strong. But if you use an instant coffee like this Via, it's not, not, I mean, not specifically Via, but I like this one. We always have it at home for baking chocolate cakes. Um, it's, it's great. It's perfect. Another thing too, is when you're mixing the dough, feel free to put in sprinkles. I mean, I think sprinkles make everything happier and it tastes really good too. So if it's for a party, throw in sprinkles, it'll be so happy. So I'm really throwing in all of these different types of um, chocolate chips. So why are these cookies so good? It's a balance of good balance of chocolate to dough. There's both a milk chocolate to dark chocolate. So everybody wins. You know, there's always those. Oh, I like. Uh, I don't. I don't know. There are people that don't like chocolate, but <laughs> for the people that do, I feel like there's team milk chocolate and team dark chocolate. Um, this has a really nice texture. There's a store here called Metropolitan Market and they make something called The Cookie and it's, it's really, really popular. It's awesome. And my partner was saying this tastes actually really sim similar. No nuts, which of course you can add nuts, um, and less salt. So I think it's because I don't use big chunks of salt, like the kosher salt, the diamond salt, but this is good. Um, yeah, great flavor development from the brown, the brown butter and then gooey center, crispy outside, and no special equipment needed. So here we go. I guess we can do a close up of how my cookies look here. I think they're pretty beautiful. Again, get these in the fridge for 24 to 48 hours. I mean, you can pop them in the oven right away. I notice it pools a little bit more and then you won't get as much of that uh, flavor development that I was talking about before. So yeah, 
I think that we are good there. Oh, another idea I had that I know would taste really good with this is if you broke up pretzels and put it in. I almost, Kevin, you know me, I kind of like to make things a little overcomplicated. I almost was going to make this four different, like chocolate chip cookie four ways. Um, like sprinkles, espresso, <laughs> pretzel. But I didn't, I'm just giving these suggestions, like we're getting creative here. And then I'm gonna get the final cookie, I think. This is a really simple one. So, oh, it's so warm. I just took it out of the oven right before this. So, am I just hanging away? But here we go. So this is what it looks like. We got the like crispy kind of <laughs> those ridges on the edge and then a lighter center. Um, it's like nice and gooey on the bottom and then um, like white in the center with some cookies so or chocolate chips. Got all the chocolate chips going on in here. I'm, I, I'm trying to get my partner to come on camera to try it for you guys so he can attest how wonderful these taste, but no. <laughs> maybe next time, maybe next time, but yeah. I, do you guys have any questions for me? Oh, Farrah, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I like to just fill, fill up on tips, give as many tips as possible. Just, I've made this so many times, I just, I feel like I learned so much and I'm just really appreciative that I can spend the time with you guys and share the, that because I love baking so much. Are you guys gonna make chocolate chip cookies on the weekend now? I hope so. But I, in the description, I'll include the link to um, Claire's recipe so you can um, visit her page too and um, also have the recipe for your enjoyment. I don't see any other questions here, so I think I'm just gonna say thank you. Again, I'm Roxy, my channel is Rockstar Bakes. Subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thank you. <laughs> Exit music right now. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I'll just dance for you guys.